So we're creating an animated overlay in Canva. Once you have your animation in, this is what it looks like in Canva. It looks good. It's about five seconds long. It could be longer. So you go to share, you want to download the MP4 video. If you download it just like this with the white background, even though it's transparent, um, it may not work out. So I always add in a green background, kind of like a green screen. And so once you select the green to go behind your design, you want to go ahead and share or download that video that video in mp4 you don't need both videos you only need um, that second video i did a duplicate and so i just need page two to be five seconds long you download that mp4 video as you know the mp4 videos take a few seconds to download and once that's ready i open up final cut pro i create a new library for all my overlays and within that library, I'll create the animated overlays. Within the project, this is where you have to get the correct specifics. Title your project, the video you want it to be vertical, if that's the template you're using in Luma Booth. The resolution, make sure it matches. And then the rendering needs to be the Apple ProRes 4444. Go to your downloads folder, drag and drop the video with the green screen. And with that video selected, you wanna go to your video effects and select keying. And within keying, I click on the keyer and that will key out that green. And now your video is transparent This video, again, was only five seconds long. And so since the finished boomerang video would be longer, I just copy and paste that clip four or five times, depending on the length of your final video. And once that's ready, you can play it back. Everything looks good. You can get ready to share it export that file in settings you want to change the settings to just video only again the source the video codex should be the app prores 4444 that's going to allow you to preserve that transparency hit next name the file to save it that will take a couple uh, seconds or minutes to render Once that file is rendered, you go to your wherever you save the file, and then you want to right click that file and select encode selected video. You're encoding it, and you're going to choose HEVC 1080p and check preserve transparency. That also will take a couple seconds. And once that's completed, the video is ready. Now, once that encoding is done, I like to take the file and rename it HEVC, just so that I know uh, the difference between the different versions that I now have on my MacBook. And then once that's ready, I Take it and drag and drop it to the iCloud Drive. The iCloud Drive on the computer will connect to the files folder on your iPhone. I create a new folder for each event using the date, month, year, and that's where I want to have the final resting place for that animated overlay. And I know where to find it when I'm ready to do the capture settings in Numa Booth. Now opening up Luma Booth in my iPhone, I'm going to create a new event, 
for simplicity just naming this bombers customize the settings on this welcome screen it's not necessary but right now I'll go ahead and change the title and add in bombers end of season party I'll change the colors to match the team colors a blue and red the background instead of the gradients changing it to the solid blue and then when I go to font changing that font to red and then also changing the font size capture mode only want the boomerang 360 I do a four second countdown and I up the quality to 8 megabits per second change the rectangle to a full HD 1080 by 1920 I choose the presets of fast slow fast slow it starts off in normal speed but the slow speed of 0.25 I think that's a little bit too slow so I tend to adjust that a little bit so the clip speed I increase that to 0.05 and then the 2x, the clip speed, I decrease that to 1.75. It makes minor differences, but in clarity, that's what I like. And then the last thing is the, the 1x, that duration, I like that to be four seconds or longer so that if there's multiple people on the booth, you get to see everyone at least one time in normal speed before some of the effects come into play. And then just some minor tweaking, making sure I like the balance um, of how long the slow-mo lasts and how the clip will finish out. Going down a little bit further on the capture settings, add overlay. Now it takes you to your iCloud drive on your phone. Find the folder for Luma Booth and where you saved it. You should see that HEVC file, select it, and then it will add to your capture settings. And then if you have a soundtrack or if you have before recording, after recording, you can add it here as well. I have an after recording for my outro it's just a short three second outro video with the company logo and company information so i'm going to go ahead and add that in as well moving through the next few tabs you can verify that you're using the back wide lens not the ultra wide just the regular wide and when i'm sharing via email or text message I like to customize that body text with the company information so that when they receive the text message it doesn't just look like spam or they can find it back or at least they have the company name since it will be coming from PhotoShare. I copy and paste that text into the SMS section for the message. Save those settings and then move on. I deselect Instagram and I deselect Twitter. All the other settings I leave on. virtual attendance and the survey. I skip past those as well as the disclaimer and then I launch the event. I went outside for a quick video. I didn't feel like setting up my booth. Did a quick spin around. The file is rendering and here's the playback. When I click on the share, I have the methods sharing to a cell phone by SMS text message. I'll show you what that looks like. It will have the company information. When you click on it, 
they'll be able to download and view it. If I share by email, typing in the email address, again, I'll show you what the email looks like. It's going to come from PhotoShare, but same thing, it at least have your company information and then the other options of airdrop very straightforward it's going to share within seconds and then finally scanning the QR code you put that up and then the customer can scan that so here's what the final video looked like normal speed slow-mo at 0.5 then it speeds up to 1.75 and then the boomerang back around. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below.